and then lunch it was either rice ugali or you know the usual yes, stuff yes and there were days for dialogue as they were called <laughs> do you know what dialogue no, is no, i don't chapati <laughs> <laughs> you have heard the joke about chapati no, I dialogue why is it called dialogue <laughs> it's called dialogue because <laughs> powerful let's continue the story so now you come to university yes so firstly did you pick this course to to the the law course yes i picked the law course because remember now i was in um, the arts class uh-huh. so the arts class had three three Options. parts mm. and the first one was law for the top students commerce for the ones just below or those who have a very big passion for finance mm-hmm. and the third one was education mm. so i picked law and because i also got top marks i was picked to do law mm. so that one and the reason why i picked law was because remember i told you about the shamba rangos at home mm. and i said the way my mom is struggling uh, with court cases and all that courts of cases of trespass land cases succession cases maybe if i become a lawyer i might be able to support her your to deal with those has things influenced your life eh? yes so that was one of the motivations what to become a lawyer can i help her sort out these annoying cases so i joined the law class in 1987 uh-huh. now we said i had been to nairobi actually Twice. it was three times uh-huh. because i've remembered when i was in gandu pope john paul came to nairobi <laughs> 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 and um, gandu was picked as one of the schools to send a delegation to come and, and join you know mm. in the celebrations so <laughs> so we came as a team from gandu and uh, we were staying in kenya high school mm. Now, <laughs> I'm not sure many people who find this funny but uh, when I went to Kenya High School that was the first time I ate sausages. <laughs> <laughs> you're like what is this? <laughs> For breakfast. So we are like okay, you mean there are people who eat breakfast <laughs> like this? <laughs> <laughs> so so we entertained the pope. We had a song. So and it was in KICC again. And, and but you know again it was uh, as it was a group thing so we would go to KICC and to Kenya High sleep and then go again so and i didn't have with, time you mean go with the Kenya High students yeah we we no it was during the holidays, oh, during the holidays. so we used okay. their dormitories okay, I get yeah it. but it was during the holiday okay. so but we mixed with other students because it was an african thing mm. so there were some people from zambia oh, malawi oh, it, it was the whole of africa yeah. they had sent delegations Powerful. with different performances there was a zambian band which was very nice uh, so and several other performances and we did our song now i didn't have time to explore nairobi those three times mm. so now come I received the invitation to join Nairobi University at the beginning of 1987 after I completed form 6 in 86. Mm-hmm. And I was very excited that day. Uh, to be honest, I did not sleep a wink. Now the day, the eve of joining. Yes. So we had agreed because I don't know Nairobi. Mm-hmm. My brother was in Kenyatta University that time, Matthew. Mm. So Matthew was supposed to pick me from um Tirum Tirum is where the Nyeri vehicles yes, stop. stop yeah. That's the bus stop. So he would he would wait for me there. I was with my cousin who was joining engineering. And the mother escorted us to town to take the matatu to Nairobi. And then my brother would come and and show us the University of Nairobi, mm. which is where the law program was. So I, we found my brother he was he's very reliable he was there waiting <coughs> and uh, now to get to the um, university of nairobi 
And you know, because I have boxes and my personal effects, we could not walk from tea room. Mm -hmm. So we took a number 23 bus. 23 was going to Kangemi. Mm. So it used to stop at Diti Dobi. If you know where Diti Dobi was, near Lillian Towers, mm -hmm. that's, that was the stage. So we, we alight there and then cross over to the campus where the registration was. So me, in my ignorance, I enter the 23. My brother has the boxes, but I went inside the bus. Uh -huh. in the middle of the bus. Yeah. And this bus is packed. <laughs> <laughs> the proper version. So yeah, yes, 23 like a game. Before me, before me took it. <laughs> <laughs> there was no breathing space. So, you know, my brother knows it's a very short distance yes. because it's just now from Tiru, from actually from Kencom to the roundabout to to yeah to the outside the mm. university mm. it's very short but me i was squeezed inside the bus so nikaendelea kusonga kusonga so by the time it reached dt dobi i'm inside so me i'm checking and seeing that's my brother down there with my boxes but i cannot get my way out of the bus yeah 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 and you know those buses never they used to nothing. stop they move so when the people are light, the driver just started driving off. My brother is there with my boxes, but the girl is in the bus. So <laughs> <laughs> my brother is very bright. So what he did, now he's seen that bus is going with my sister. What will I tell my mom? So he, he stopped the matatu, which was next. So he told the driver, there's a girl in that bus. You have to stop it. What? So he entered into the matatu very quickly. With your boxes, everything? Yes, yes. And uh, now the matatu started chasing the bus. It was like a movie. <laughs> 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 so, so the chase of the man, now me, I'm desperate now. I'm fighting to, to get to the, to the nini. But you see, now I have no idea where I am. Mm. So the bus went round, you know, St. Paul's yes. Chapel yes. all the way and it stopped at museum yeah. because that was, you know, where the Pope's uh, diocese mm. uh, at Museum yes. Hill, that is where now the next bus stop was. So it stopped. And um, what the Matatu did was to come and block the bus so that the bus not does move not nowhere. move <laughs> until the girl is Out. down. That's what happened. Yeah, your brother is, is good in He is a very really quick thinker. <laughs> <laughs> so you were like, welcome. He was like, welcome to Nairobi. <laughs> I tell you, that was my very first now real experience yes. in Nairobi. Yeah. Welcome to the city, yeah. young girl. Yeah. You know, Mary, you said something. I'm going back to it a bit. Mm. You talked about eating sausage for the first time. Eh? Yeah. The level of poverty that you faced was real. Mm. And on social media, there, there was a time where you were, you were going viral because you talked about the first time you wore shoes. Yes. You know, we hear parents always say, ah, the first time I wore shoes, I used to walk nine kilometers to school. Yeah. For you, this thing is real. It's real. When you say you are running, yeah. when you say you are motiv part of your motivation was to get a better life. Yes. It is not a joke. No, it was real for me because... Um, I used to really admire those two boys and girls who would be able to come to school with the shoes. And those were mostly the students who were in the suburbs where the parents were working in town. You know, like I talked about Kamakwa. Mm. So there were some residential houses there. Mm. So the workers from town used to stay there. So their kids, some of them came to uh. our school. So those ones would have proper socks, proper shoes, proper school bags. You know, and I used to really admire that. Although also for them, they used to feel odd. Because? Because you are probably in a class of 30, only two or three of you have shoes. Wow. So some used to remove their shoes when they come into class and put them back again when they are going home. Yes. Because they are feeling odd. Yes. They want to be like everybody else. Yeah. So, I mean, it's very interesting. Those who have shoes, they are <laughs> admiring. Those who, you know, they, they, they don't want to be in them. Yeah. Those who don't have, they are admiring those who have. 
And I think that's a human thing also. Yes. We always want what we don't have. I actually interviewed a lady here mm. who was from Kibirigui, mm. uh, Judy Nyawera, yes. and she had shoes and mm-hmm. went to a school where people don't have shoes. Yes. So she talked about she talked about how she would remove the shoes. She would remove. It was yes. common because now they are feeling the odd ones out. Yeah. And you see also, as we used to admire them, sometimes the boys and the girls would be followed. Oh, she's very she and now we had to they have shoes. <laughs> So they also used to feel fun because yeah. other kids are following them. Because <laughs> of shoes. Because of shoes. Wow. The things we take for granted. So when yeah. did you wear shoes for the first time? When I went to Kagofiri because it was a requirement for me to buy to wear shoes. You know that list they give you yes. reporting things? Shoes were mandatory. So my auntie is actually the one who donated a pair of shoes to me. Wow. Yeah. So the first time I wore shoes, it was my auntie who donated. That's why I also say I'm a community child. Yes. Yeah, because there are so many people who give things for me. Okay, this shoe phenomenal is nice, but we'll go to you. I'm just I'm trying to ask. So as a kid, you're running. Is it that your your soul becomes so hard? Like, cause I see kids without shoes and they are perfectly cool. No, you... What, you just adapt? You just adapt because you don't have... So you don't know how it feels like to wear. Uh. So, but it was tough for us in Nyeri, especially because at that time, you know, it used to get very, very cold. Especially like June, July, August. Mount Kenya is right there. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know, we are near Mount Kenya Mm. and the Abadeas are Mm. right also next. So it used to get really chilly and cold especially during that season. Mm. So you would actually, when you're playing outside in the field, it's all grass, it's wet, your feet just get numb wow. from the cold. Mm. Yeah, but we sort of just got used to it. It did not stop us doing what we needed to do, whether it's you, playing. You hadn't seen something or, different. And I didn't know anything different. So it was okay for me. Yeah, Mary, you've come from far. That's why I never thought it was a big story <laughs> until that guy highlighted it. <laughs> so what was the issue? <laughs> I mean, I just was where, the way I was. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, you get used. So let's go back to university. You come mm. out, you know, oh, finally, you know, you know. I was uh, saved by my brother. <laughs> so I always imagine these days, what if he hadn't caught up with me and the bus took me to Kangemi? Yeah. What, ah, yeah, what would yeah. have happened? Because that was the <laughs> final destination. <laughs> so you you go now to university? Yes. Uh, you said the year is 87? 87. 87. Yeah. Okay. So I joined the, the law class. I mean, there was no drama there. Uh, so we were two classes, as I told you earlier. Me, I was in the 86 group, qualifying group, and there was an 85 qualifying group. Mm. So we had different classes and we went, that time the university program was three years, not like now when it is four years. Paid by the government? Fully paid. And we're not talking, you know, this, this is the era, it's not a loan. No, it no. It was there was an element of a loan. Oh, there was an element of a loan. What is now called HELB, the oh, yes, High, yes, Higher yes, Education yes. Loans yes. Board. I don't recall what it was called, but there was a student loan partly, and there was a grant partly. Okay, so there was bursary with a mix of. Yeah, it was a mixture of the two. Okay, okay. So I remember I paid a student loan after I started working for some years, okay. and I finished paying. Okay. So there was part of it which was a loan, a student loan, and part of it was a grant. Okay. But the beauty about it is that everything was provided by the government. Accommodation? Accommodation. I was in box, uh, as the, uni- the, the women's hall is called, uh-huh. when I joined. Uh, before I joined, I went to Parklands campus. Okay. Box is, it's up the, it's up the, after, after St. Paul's Mamlaka. coming up. Yes, Mamlaka yes. Road. Okay, okay, yeah, that, okay. That's the women, the bigger women's hostel. Okay. So that's why I stayed the first time. And you had a room to yourself. Actually, we were sharing two people okay. with a partition. Um, the food was free. And you cannot believe what was on the menu. Sausages. <laughs> <laughs> Sausages were there. Eggs were there. <laughs> and then there's something else I discovered when I joined university. Do you know jelly? <laughs> <laughs> That, <laughs> yes. 
Inacheza hiyo. So that one that one I discovered it in campus yes. in the, in the women's hall uh, kitchen. Mm. So it was a full course menu. So breakfast you have either sausages or eggs, tea, bread. Name it, it's a full breakfast. And then lunch it was either rice, ugali or you know the usual yes. stuff. Yes. And there were days for dialogue as they were called. <laughs> Do you know what dialogue no, is? No, I don't. Chapati. <laughs> <laughs> you have heard the joke about chapati. No, I haven't. Dialogue. <laughs> Why is it called dialogue? <laughs> it's called dialogue because um, during one of the university strikes, uh -huh. during Moi's time, um, Moi asked the minister for education. I don't recall who it was that time. What do these students want? Why are they behaving like this? Why are they misbehaving like this? Um, then the student, the, the, the minister said, uh, Your Excellency, they are asking for dialogue. No, then Moi says, Come and the dialogue, Wanapata, Wanataka. Si wapatiwe wakule. <laughs> si wapatiwe wakule. <laughs> so chapati automatically now dialogue. became dialogue. <laughs> Today is the day for dialogue. <laughs> to cool. <laughs> that's how that's how chapati was baptized. It wasn't Kamotho who was minister of education that time. I don't I think it was maybe Kamotho. I can't quite recall who it yeah. was, but it was one of those ministers during Moi's time. So anyway, back to the accommodation paid for, food paid yeah, for. So, so the meal, dinner. the meal is actually it was a three course because you have uh, the appetizer, it was either soup, soup or yeah. a salad, and then you have the main. Uh, meat is a uh, meat or fish. Fi Saturday was fish day, uh, wow. chicken, uh, and then there was a dessert. So it was either jelly or custard, custard. Yes. or ice cream. Can you imagine? Wow, 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 wow. We ate all those hey, you in are, campus. You are loving it. It huh? was good life. <laughs> and then on top of that, we used to get an allowance. I'm sure you've heard of boom. Yes, boom. So, and that was a lump sum that we would get at the beginning of the semester. Wow. Pocket money. Pocket money we would, use, we would get. So we used to go to the bank, Kenya Commercial Bank, and get the cash directly. Like, like, like what kind of amount are we talking about? Uh, I think it was 30,000 at that time, which what? was a lot of money. What? Truth be told, I used that money to educate my younger brothers. What? Yes. So students used it in different ways. So some would buy the big entertainment systems. Others would just buy clothes. But for me, I used that money to educate my two younger brothers. You are joking. Yes, because they were in secondary school that time. You know, I, I spoke with, again, mm. Pas Mushiri from Nabo Capital. I yes. had a conversation with him here. Yes. And even him, he was explaining how that money that came in mm -hmm. at that time, how it be helped. Mm -hmm. that there are people who come from families where yes. that money is what enables families to eat. Exactly. So either you use it for food or education or health. So for me, food was not an issue. So I used it for school fees for my two what? younger brothers who were in secondary school at that time. That so is... it was a windfall. Okay. And it was paid on time. You are reporting tomorrow, pass through the bank. The money is there. And we're talking all yeah. the students. All the students. All the students without discrimination. Yeah, and it did not matter from you are coming from a to disadvantaged Lugana, background or Nairobi, a matter. rich bag. It didn't matter. All the students got that money. Mm, 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 now, the other exciting one was the NYS. Me, I went to NYS. Was it mandatory by the way? It was NYS? mandatory. It was. Huh? So after the coup, Moi say, President Moi said, these, these guys need to be taught a lesson. <laughs> they are becoming very hard-headed. Yeah. We need to teach them a lesson and make them behave. So he made it a rule 
or before you go to university, the gap year. you must go to NYS for at least three months. Mm. Initially, actually, it was six months, mm. but then again, it was cut down to three months, probably because of logistics. Mm. So, but because now, as we were at double intake, remember we were 86 and 85 group mm. going to university around the same time. Yes. The 85 group went before we reported. Mm. But as we reported, and then we went after the first term. Mm, mm. I think it was after the first term or the first year. So in the middle of campus. Yes. So which was a problem because we all knew each other. So so we, we could conspire. Mm. And we were punished for it. For conspiring and indiscipline. Those officers were tough. Huh? So on the first day you report... So they tell you, you, you are looking like you'll be a very difficult group. Munajua sana. Mutajua hamjui. So right from the gate, Ebu tembea na on your knees. On your knees. And where is this that you went? Where, where which? The, the women, we went to Naivasha. Oh. And then, and, the, you're taken. and then the boys went to, the men went to Gilgil. Mm-hmm. So we came together the last two weeks, you mm. know, to practice for the passing out parade. Yes. Yeah, but the women used to go to Naivasha and the <sighs> men to Gilgil. But I think for me, it was a test of endurance mm. because mm. it was tough. Again, now there we had 5BX. 5BX was running out of the camp at 5 a.m. Mm. Mm. You ran for, I think we used to do 5 or 10 kilometers every morning. And you cannot miss. Get out. Yeah, you can't miss. So after three months, we were properly shipped. (laughs) (laughs) Ready for uni. (laughs) So now, when we were doing the final practice now in Gilgil, and it, it was actually, I think, the day before the passing out parade, so the president was coming. Me, I think the heat was too much. I fainted. (laughs) (laughs) I fainted. I don't know whether I expected (laughs) sympathy or what. (laughs) So, see, now I'm down. (laughs) And I think when you're in that state, you can hear what people are saying, but you cannot react. So I heard the madam say, Kuruti, eh? Kufa. Kufa, tutajua kwenu wow, ni wow. wapi sasa. Tutakuja. So when I was like, what? there's no sympathy here. I better wake up. <laughs> no one cared. <laughs> you get up at your own time. <laughs> and you see the others have to be in attention. Yes. So no one can touch yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the way you see yeah, someone yeah, fainting yeah. and you rush there mm-hmm. to help. No, Kufa. No one has time for you. So anyway, it it ended well. Yeah. And we had a very inspiring um, uh, session with the then Chief Justice Cecil Miller. Mm. So he came and talked to us about, you know, many things, integrity and all that. So he was a keynote speaker during the... Um, the passing out parade. So all in all, it was for good. you. For real, it was real passing out. <laughs> yeah, I did a passed out <laughs> before the main passing out, <laughs> and that was the first and only time I ever fainted in any situation. But I, I vowed never again. Uh-uh, I will not allow my body to give in <laughs> because maybe no one has sympathy for you. Okay. Yeah. So it was good, and uh, we went back to campus. And then in second year, we were transferred so, so from... So, first year now, you went uh, to campus. You know, campus... Remember what you talked about when you talked about university? Yes. I mean, not university, uh, uh, high school. Yeah. And meeting people from different places and people have different things that they want to do and they like doing. Yes. There are different people who... Behaviors. Mm. Now, this is a melting pot. Yes. You're meeting people from all across Kenya. Yes. Very rich, mm. very poor, mm. different tribes. Mixes, yeah. Completely complete mm. mixed. Mm. How was that first year for you, your first time? Did you have a roommate? Did you? Because I heard you talk about there was a partition. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we had two. <laughs> My roommate was actually currently a judge. What do you mean? Currently? In the high court. Your roommate My is roommate, a judge now? My roommate in campus. Yes. 
my first roommate is 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 a judge currently currently <laughs> what's what's her name 